For a leaky faucet or other plumbing emergency, a pipe wrench is the go-to tool. The jaws on the wrench are designed to fit around smooth round pipes so the pipes can be gripped in turn. But how do they make the wrench adjustable so it can clamp down tightly on almost any size pipe? Making a pipe wrench starts with melting down raw metals into cast iron so it can be poured into a mold to cast the long, strong handles for the wrenches. Cast iron is a mix of two main materials, raw iron and scrap steel. Together, they make a ductile cast iron that's both strong and flexible. To mix the cast iron, the metal is dumped into an electric furnace that heats it to 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The furnace can hold 12 tons of melting metal or enough to make over 2,300 wrench handles 18 inches in length. It takes 45 minutes for the materials inside the furnace to melt. Then the cast iron is moved to a holding furnace that keeps up to 50 tons of iron red hot and ready to go. The handles themselves are cast using a polyurethane template that's pressed by a machine into a bed of sand to make a mold. Just like pressing your hand into the sand at the beach. When the molds are ready, a huge two-ton ladle transfers molten iron from the holding furnace into a pouring tank that pours it into the molds. It takes about 45 pounds of the molten iron to cast the five wrench handles made by each mold. After they're filled, the sand molds pass through a cooling tunnel before they're broken apart by workers and dumped into a vibrator to shake the sand away from the handles. Then the seams left in the handles by the molds are ground away. And the handles are finished with a coat of electrically charged auto body paint. The charge in the paint adheres it to the metal like a magnet. For a watertight seal, it protects the iron from leaky pipes. While the handles are being cast, the steel jaws of the pipe wrencher machine to add the teeth that bite into the pipes. The jaw comes in two parts. A flat plate called the heel jaw that sits on top of the handle and a piece shaped like a backwards J called the hook jaw. The hook jaw moves up and down from the heel jaw when you turn a nut on the side of the wrench to tighten the jaws around any size pipe. The steel in the jaws is actually stronger than the iron in the handles because the jaws grip the pipes and do all the work. After the teeth are cut, another machine mills threads into the long shank on the hook jaw to hold the nut that moves up and down the shank to tighten and loosen the wrench. When both pieces of the jaws are fully milled, they're heat treated in a furnace at 1500 degrees to strengthen the steel so the teeth in the jaws won't wear down when they bite into steel pipes. The final piece of the wrench is the nut. They're milled out of long steel rods by an automatic screw machine. It takes a series of eight rotating spindles to first drill out the center hole of the nut and then add the traction rings on the outer rim so it can easily be turned with just the thumb. After the nuts are shaped, a second machine called a nut tapper cuts threads on the inside of each nut to screw into the matching threads on the shank of the hook jaw. When all of the parts are ready, workers assemble the wrenches. 
First, the heel jaw is mounted to the top of the handle with a steel pin. A machine spins both ends of the pin to lock it in tight. Then the threaded shaft on the hook jaw slides into the handle and is secured with the nut. And the pipe wrench is ready to get a grip on just about any leaky pipe under your sink.